Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an incredible night of Team Fortress 2. We've got uh, we've got a triple header tonight for you. That hasn't been uh, that hasn't been said in a while. So coming up first tonight, we have the Logjam Cup powered by serveme.tf and uh, hosted by ETF2L. The first game of tonight is going to be coast to coast against the MIPC organization, those Finnish guys. Uh, against a slightly lesser known team, but we're going to cover it because it's going to be close and it's going to be incredible. Uh, joining me tonight is going to be Ali with David on the camera. My name is Sideshow and uh, we've got a brilliant night of TF2 for you ahead. You know who the second, uh, the second game is, Ali? I'm hyped for it. Yeah, I'm so hyped for it and I don't even know what it is offhand. Oh my God. <laughs> it's maincore.tf, the new incredible team um, in Europe the new superstar team that uh, they're going to be playing against animate esports which is uh, a team that's been kicking around for a while with a new name a new uh, organization behind them and then after you've been log jammed out with those two incredible matches we're going to go straight into sweden v france in the etf2l nations cup quarterfinals with the winner going ahead to face lithuania who we recently saw storm to a victory against finland Yep. Are you um, ready? Are you hyped, Ali? I am hyped. I'm not actually sure who's going to win that, though. Um, I'd go for Sweden offhand, but we'll have to see closer to the time because both teams obviously had to play their hearts out to get here. Um, I think maybe maybe each other are going to be the more difficult match against Lithuania. So we could actually say um, whichever of these teams wins might actually make their way to the final. But Lithuania are also very good, but so let's not underestimate them. But for now, we have to only talk about Logjam. So... What can you tell me about the map? You've been playing it more than me recently. Are you excited? Do you think it's a great map? Is it going to be a is it going to be a winner for future tournaments? It definitely is. I I love Logjam. I think we've uh, championed it quite a bit and got it into this uh, season by by we. I mean uh, the little little double mix group of friend players that we've got going. We uh, we picked out this map with the map maker. It looked awesome, so we gave it a shot, and uh, we've kind of got a bit of community support behind it as well. Um, so I'm a big fan of this map. The map, map maker as well, whose name is Heiss, um, is brilliant. He's really, uh, really good. He takes all the feedback that us and the Americans give him and uh, he's very prompt at working on it and fixing any issues. And that is, in fact, what this entire cup is all about. Is it not? It's about ironing out those little issues and seeing if we can get any awesome feedback on it before it goes into the next season. Yeah, I mean, I definitely remember loving it. And looking at this current version they've got going, the middle, I think, is one that I can't, I can't remember when about. But before that, um, it was completely bare. And there was a big arch at one stage. Do you remember that? Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, this is definitely maybe a more Viaduct style mid. But um, either way, I guess it's the one that people have come to be the most happy with. And we've seen really good middles, actually. Um, but yeah, it's like the first big way in which we've seen teams compete and lots of people get to see it. And it will be very insightful. I hope it's enough so that um, people are hyped to play it next season and we don't have another sort of one season wonders that just come in and go away again. Like everyone was so hyped for Turbine last season as being something that was done and that went again. But um, hopefully the reason for that will be because Logjam is going to stay around. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm well hyped for playing this game uh, in an actual season. I'm not going to be playing next season. Are you going to be playing next season, Ali? I haven't played uh, for about seven seasons. Yeah, we're we're getting hyped about a map that we're not even going to be playing properly. <laughs> but I I really like it, and I'm going to enjoy definitely casting and uh, watching games on it be played because I think it's a very fast map that will be incredibly exciting. But enough of this about the map, Ali. We've come here for the teams. These two teams playing in group. Who even knows? One of the groups. That's not important right now. And uh, we matched up against each other. We have the MIPC organization in the blue against Coast to Coast in the red. They're using their full rosters apart from uh, Thalash is working for Ed, who is the scout for Coast to Coast. Do you want to run us through? Are you in the server at the moment? I know you have difficulty it. downloading the map. Um, do you want to run us through the MIPC organization's roster? So... MIPC has been around for ages and have obviously suffered loads of different changes at that time just because no team can have all of their players stuck together forever. It's noted to maybe Hawks, I think he's going to play Scout, is that right? I have no idea. Um, probably, yes, actually, yeah. 
It's going to be um, Kahunan and Salmon on the soldiers, so that does okay. leave Hawks onto uh, onto Scout with Tuntu. So we've got Etwi, is that how you pronounce it? It's going to be on Medic. Um, the soldiers, as you just said, um, Zapis actually from AWS, um, famous Scout last season, is actually going to be um, picking up the Demo Man, the Sticky Bomb, seeing what he can do on that. Possible that he actually does less damage than he might do on Scout, but anyway. Also got Hawks. Um, Normally, well, he's been a prime division soldier for ages, now playing Scout. And alongside him, Tuntu has been around forever playing Scout, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the Finnish guys have all been around for, for a ton of time. Um, quickly to go through the Coast to Coast roster, which is a team that probably people haven't heard of very much as we actually go live. We've got Ramagan on Medic. We, our soldiers are going to be AMS on Pocket and Lippy on uh, Roma. We've got Kuna, the, the famed French demo man on demo man. And uh, Thalish and MT on Scout. Takes us to its first mid, Ali. Kuna's already so, arrived. So, yeah, Zap is just a tiny bit behind them. Both demons are going to sit back and try and spam, try and get the hurt down. The, um, the soldier, the blue soldier, um, is going to be forced back. The double soldier bomb comes in. And as Lippy's just going to destroy to start off, we're going to get two frags. Kuna's going to follow up with Talash backing him up, and they're going to drive MIPC right at this point. It looks like they want to push him to second and see if they can get any more flag frags. The medic's running away. The soldier jumps up to try and deny um, Kuna, but Kuna's just going to take him out. But it is going to allow um, the medic of MIPC to escape for this middle. Um, but yeah, dominating so far by Coast to Coast. Yeah, I really like Coast to Coast's aggression on this mid. It's something that you have to do. It looks like a mid that you could play passively, but you just can't. You get destroyed if you try and do that. Oh, Zappis takes down AMS with that sticky trap right on the door, and Tuntu's completely blocked Ramagan in on the top left. This is a little bit like you might see from uh, from a Badlands play. The last is kind of similar, but they've got a scout just on the point. Empty's just run straight onto the point there, and uh, he's going to have to be a heroic defense here if they want to take it. They've got such good high ground at the moment because it's just one scout left alive. Can he take him? The demo man comes in. There's not going to be spawners in time, and this is going to be the first round of coast to coast, taking that decisive. What was it? Yeah. Less than two minutes. Yeah, only a minute and a half for that first round, and I think we're going to see more aggression from the Finns at this mid. They probably haven't practiced it very much, any of these teams. Uh, it's not a map that's currently being scrimmed that often, uh, but I think we're going to see an excellent game here and very aggressive. Kuna's moving straight across the point, getting tons of damage down onto Zappes, but Kahunan's gone in really aggressive as well, but Thalash shuts him down. The heals have just arrived, and Aeonus and Lippy have bombed in. They take down Zappis, so that's a demo man down for the Finns. The Finns are all clustered up around their choke point as well. Oh, Salmon's on incredibly low health. It was uh, managed to get out of there, though. We've seen a rerun of the last. Except, is everyone going to get out? Nah, Talos is going to chase him down. There was just some massive damage there. It's so hard to get out of Logjam when you're all trying to get out of that single choke point. It's like trying to get out of Badlands. Um, and it was just one massive pipe there from um, Kuna that just completely destroyed a scout and a soldier together. And he was really weak and he couldn't defend um, Etwi. Talas just chased them down. And once again, we're going to be pushing on to last with... But this time it's going to be 100% advantage for Coast to Coast where Etwi didn't survive last time. They've got a pyro and they've also got a scout behind that's hopefully He's going to pick up a frag, it's going to delay them slightly. But I mean, you always say that in, the, in these scenarios, the attacking team trading frags is much more beneficial. The viewer's going to come in bottom left. They're going to get straight out of the pyro. He's going to go straight down. AO... AMS does go down in that bit, it's not going to matter, Talash is just doing huge work, five frags as Lippy comes in as well, just going to be the demo man left alive, and that's going to be the second cap out for Coast to Coast. That's brilliant play from Coast to Coast, destroying these Finnish players at the beginning of this map, they've been racking up some rounds really quickly here. Um, I'm loving this double bomber mid from Lippy and AMS, if you see, just as the heals arrive at mid, they take that as their uh, chance to really go aggressive, and they've already shut down Kahunan right at the beginning most of the time. Let's see if we get a rerun of that. Yeah, both them are being passively, fairly passive once again, as passive as you can be on Logjam. Kuna being the more aggressive, you would say, denying that um, area coming from the, I guess, storm, you might say. As the Soldier Bomb comes in once again, this time they're slightly out of sync and Lippy doesn't get much done. And this is going to allow MOPC to get quite a way up across the point. Palace is going to take down Kahuna, but Ramagan going down is going to completely take um, the steam out of coast to coast. And they're going to either have to go all or nothing here. And it looks like, well, they're coming quite slow. Finally, the Soldier Bomb comes in. They haven't got any damage yet. Onto Etwi though, he's still at 150 health. It's just gonna be Kuna left alive. He's gonna get one frag. Actually, no, Talash is still in behind. He's on the medic at the moment. Can he draw off a big pipe from Zappis? Zappis showing his pipe aim, translates from Scout, and protecting his medic there. It could have been just a, sort of a straight trade and recontest the middle, but um, the big DM from Zappis is gonna guarantee this one in favor of MIPC. It is, yeah, and now they've got a full uber advantage to be able to push on to the second point. We're not going to see a defense of the Spire here again, probably, but uh, Lippy might go for some kind of force as they come through the log room here. 
uh, pushing out of this new door. Zap is leading, but uh, the heals are really quite far back at the moment. I think they're just trying to pressure them off Spire before they actually commit. But Thalash gets a pick right at the beginning, and they're bringing the fight to them. They do manage to get the force out, and now the uh, MIPC have to try and get some frags with this. Lippy's stuck in, Empty's stuck in, and they might pick up a frag onto Thalash as well. But they're not focusing down players, and they're actually losing players of their own as Hawks goes down. Everybody on Coast to Coast is so incredibly weak, but they're not making the frags happen, MIPC. And they're losing this team fight. Yeah, they just had a couple of players behind who played it so well. They stayed in that cave area for so long. Once the Uber has come out, um, Coast Coast just really sandwiched the OMPC team. They had nowhere to go. And if someone got separated from their main pack, as it were, then they just got picked up. And yeah, that was a really solid non Uber versus Uber defense. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Coast to Coast team really making full use of the height advantage on Spire. But I feel like uh, that really shouldn't have sw uh, swayed the team fight that much. MIPC should have been able to pop the Uber and get off much uh, more frags with it. Yeah, scouts from Coast Coast showing no respect. The Talish has just run in so many times and empty behind there on that last push did so much work. This time the Uber's going to come in from Cave, I think that was, and they're just going to completely decimate the MIPC team. Just Hawks alive going to be um, dancing around in that lobby. There's no way he can do much against four players there, the whole heavy team from coast to coast, and they're just gonna, um, they've got one scout capping on second, we're, we're gonna get a couple of respawns here before that second is capped out, but the spawn camp and the soldier and demo are gonna be enough such that medic and soldier can just stand on the point and cap it out, and three to zero already. What's that? Just six minutes gone. Yeah, that was a bit of a push by a defense by uh, MIPC. They didn't show the other team enough respect. They were sitting way too far forward with a big uber disadvantage, and uh, I think they were a little bit, um, bluffed by the fact that they seem to be appearing from log room and instead they switched it up came out of Gandalf's summer cave and uh, destroyed them with the Uber charge. Kahoon and bombing in straight onto uh, Kuna there but gets shut down by empty and both of the teams trading a little bit of spam now AMS bombs in he's onto F3 doesn't manage to get him there but that's allowed so much room for coast to coast to move forward they're taking a lot of damage but they're getting all the MIPC frags and now the spam comes in onto Zapis and Equi they've got locked into this log room and they're getting destroyed here. Empty picking up the frag onto the finished medic. And now he brings out the bat! <laughs> the bat kill onto Zappis. Humiliation. Yeah, they might have just got out there the combo, but Empty was already on the flank before they could get onto that second point. And it's just going to be coast to coast once again, taking the confidence, coming forward onto this last point. They've only got second point half capped and they're already there. They were just about looking in. Um, to push before they got the call back. They've been so clinical with these pushes, haven't failed a single one yet, I don't think. As Uber this time comes out with main, they get Kahuna really early on with Kuna's tickies. They're just going to send that scout onto the point though, but Zap is going to come around just in time to cover it. There's a soldier now onto the medic and demo. Can he get the last rocket off? Zap is juking this soldier at the back of the point for so long, but Kuna's going to come back in with his medic and try and get some work done. Talish is dancing around on the floor, will get one frag, and this is definitely going to go in favor of Coast Coasters. They almost juked that there for long enough, MIPC, but. Yeah, they just had too many players dead by the time the Uber war. Yeah, they gave up a lot of position as Coast to Coast Ubered in through those doors and uh, they just couldn't win it back. They had too little health and too many frag disadvantages. Uh, what are we going to see at this middle? I really want to come back from MIPC. They aren't a terrible team. They've got all the finished talent from Team Finland that we saw coming out a while back. Come on, Finland, you got to do something here. But Lippy's bombed in and he's doing so much damage. He gets onto Zappis and he also put a lot of damage out onto the rest of the team. AMS follows it up and gets so many frags. It's only Tuntu and Salmon left alive. Salmon hiding out behind this rock. He's trying to duel the scouts, but the scouts have got such an advantage on that little piece of high ground. And that's a full wipe and Ramagan has stayed alive. They just can't deal with the soldiers of Coast to Coast at the moment, MIPC. I just looked there as um, by the time their second soldier, AMS, died, they're, both of their scouts, the demo and the medic, were completely decidedly on their side of mill. Kuna, Kuna had picked up one like big pipe across the middle and got a kill, but the rest of it was just their soldiers. And MIPC, if they just don't need to worry about going aggressive, if they just focus those coast to coast soldiers and just start at the middle, they will they will be able to take them down and then be a six versus four fight, but they're not doing it. It's the Uber fight's gonna come to the last. The pyro is gonna deny um, the medic anymore, and there's no gonna be no more Uber players on point. He finally catches his players, but um, they weren't be able, they weren't able to go forward when they didn't have their medic. The pyro is still behind. <laughs> Talash just about to take Cox down. Um, now they're pressured right back at the point, but they still got players alive. They might be able to defend this MIPC. There's a scout on the point. They drop to defend it, and it's just a couple of players left alive. Kuno with the pipe, and Zap Talash is gonna finish off to make it five. That's nine minutes. That is such a quick map. That was incredible. That was an absolute roll. Um, MIPC not able to mount any kind of defense. Um, they won mid once and then failed the Spire push where they had a full uber advantage. So 
really unfortunate from MLPC. Possibly, um, what do you think? What was the difference between those two teams, Ali? Well, I said it earlier, but the soldiers on the middle, they just couldn't handle the double soldier bomb from coast to coast. Um, maybe they knew that about MIPC. Maybe MIPC were just trying to go a bit too aggressive when all they really had to do was focus the soldiers and they'd be able to take the middle. Um, they took one, let's not forget. Um, but even then, that was really hotly con contested down to just a medic and a demo versus a scout alive. Um, but yeah, I don't know. They just outclassed them coast to coast, really. Shall we have a look at some logs? I believe David will be able to bring up these tasty logs onto the screen. And a quick reminder as well for anybody who uh, has a bit of taste in their mouth after we hyped up such a such a terrible roll there, actually. That was, that was an incredible roll, nine minutes. We do have a triple header for you tonight. So the next game is also going to be part of the Log Jam Cup, um, which will be in a little while because that game ended so quickly. Um, and after that, we have the Nations Cup game, Sweden v France. So stick around. We've got a lot of brilliant tf2 left to show you but let's go to those logs have you got a link ali i've got it here. uh yeah admirable posted it in the stream chat and i'm just looking at kuna 534 damage per minute zap is 374 still fairly respectful in normal game but kuna 12 kills one death 534 damage per minute he was just unstoppable um i talked about soldiers but when you're letting kuna do that much then no surprises you get five owed in however long yeah, I think um, I think one of the things there from coast to coast was that the soldiers were making a lot of room for Kuna to to manoeuvre around the map and be able to put out that kind of damage and that kind of KD. Uh, it was definitely, in my opinion, AMS and Lippy doing all the work on uh, on mid fights, especially to to give Kuna that room where he could lay out such incredible damage. The mid's very nicely positioned for that kind of aggression. And um, yeah, Zappis not doing too badly, but I think a player to highlight there is Tuntu on 1 for 11. The scouts yeah. of MIPC not effective in denying um, their position on mid wasn't the best and they weren't able to hit their shots either. So that was a bit of a, um, a bit of a problem that you could pick up on there. Yeah, just like 1,000 damage in nearly 10 minutes. That's on track for like less than 4K. So yeah. Um... Yep, yeah, definitely highlightable. It's hard to say on these team dynamics whether like the way the team played meant he couldn't do much, but when uh, Coast to Coast were sending their soldiers so aggressive, it's just a case of them hitting their shots, really. And yeah, didn't do it. Okay, um, so because that map ended so abruptly, Ali, we are going to go to a little mini break before we enter our next game, just to give... You guys watching the stream another little run through of what we've got tonight the next game that we're going to cast is again going to be on log jam i promise you it's going to be more contested than that game was but um do you know what i, ge I genuinely thought the coast to coast and mipc would be a lot closer than this but uh never mind never mind so our next game is uh main call against animate esports so you're going to get a glimpse of the best team in the EU right now, the super team that has been formed from uh, from the ashes of I-52. Who, who have we got on that roster, Ali? Is that... Um, Ari... We've got some super players. Is that Ari Metzik? It is, it is. Okay, I, I know this one. All right, so on Medic, you're going to have Miralin. Uh, many reckon to be the best medic in the world. Um, on demo, you've got War, of course, Epsilon's demo from I-52. Soldiers, you've got Ips, who come back from a short hiatus, but before that was playing Made in Germany, who won Prem um, for the last season he was playing. And on Soldier with him, also you have Rising, who um, played for reason at I-52 and completely smashed, even if he was in a weaker team than he might have otherwise have been. And then on Scouts, you have Sam, I think, is that right? Who was also in Reason, and before that in Maiden Germany with Ips. And second scout is Kyla, who completely destroyed everyone's faces for Epsilon. Well, everyone besides 4G, that is. Yeah, so if that doesn't get you hyped, if those names don't ring a bell, you have been living under a rock for a while. Those are some incredible big names. That's a super team that we're going to be coming up with. Uh, so we're going to take a short break. Something like 25 minutes, the game is going to start at 2045. Uh, I think that information is going to be on your screen right about now as well. And we're going to be going back to Logjam. We'll see you in a little while. <laughs> 